So this is about 135 to the center of the green. And one thing that's been helpful for me is anything past maybe about 145 yards, all I'm doing is aiming at the middle of the green. And what I mean by that is, or why I do that is because the dispersion or the left to right pattern of the shots as I get into my longer irons gets wider and wider. Uh, makes sense, you're trying to hit it further so you're just, your uh, variation's gonna be wider as well, uh, left to right. And so if you're aiming at the flag, you're not thinking about all the hazards that are out over there. And so, but when you're aiming at the middle of the green, you have a much bigger kind of target, right? So here, a couple things to think about. I have a bunker up front, left, right, and a bunker back left. And so, um, if I had to miss, I think I would want to miss left short. And the reason for that is because it's going to be an easier opportunity to chip. If I miss it long, I probably have a chip that I have to, once landed, has to roll downhill. And I don't have a lot of control over how much a ball rolls downhill. All right, so all those slots in, pick my nine iron, which is my 135 club. So I have to hit it perfect to get it to the pin, and if I miss hit it, I'll be a little bit short. I think that just trickled onto the edge of the green. So I have two choices here. I can see Maybe about five feet into the fringe area and so I could try to, to chip this out a little bump and run or I could putt it and generally for myself when I'm in these situations I feel much better about getting the ball closer chipping or putting rather than chipping so it's all about minimizing damage if I take a uh, like a wedge and I take a swing my miss is potentially hitting it thin, goes way past the green, hitting it fat, goes short, that's just a wasted shot. Whereas with my putter, maybe I'm a little bit five feet short or five feet long, but that's a much better miss. All right, so unfortunately, I three-putted that one. Uh, well, technically it's two putts because the putt off of the fringe counts as a chip, I believe. But hoping to do better. Actually got saved because the ball hit the cup. But I will take that. I feel like that's gonna happen. And even though it's a little disappointing, uh, a big part about golf is just getting past the bad shots or the bad holes and not letting them compound. All right, so I see a lot of comments about pace and I think if it's, it's understandable, maybe if you were used to golfing before the pandemic, but uh, this just is what it is now. And so just having a good attitude about being out on the course, anytime you're out here, I mean, just thinking about all the folks who aren't it's a really great and fortunate thing to be out here and I know that might come off as a little preachy but it just sucks it really sucks when you're paired with someone who is just impatient all the time and just is whining about the pace and it's just like hey why don't you just try to enjoy your round uh, instead of trying to bring everyone's down all right so this is a 350 yard par 4 and how I'm gonna treat this is pretend like it's a par five that maybe I didn't hit the greatest tee shot off of. So a par five might be 550 yards maybe. And so a good drive off of the tee box is gonna take you into maybe 250 to 300 yards in. Right now it's, I'm 350, so I'm gonna treat it like I hit a good, a poor tee shot. And now I'm just trying to save par. 
So these are the little games that I'm playing with myself to, to make this a learning experience. So um, another thing I'm going to do is pick my five hybrid because although it's not really the club that I would typically choose, in a situation where I've hit a poor tee shot off the tee, it's just a club that maybe I, I feel like I haven't used as much lately, so I want I want to get more reps in. So two good whacks with this should give me pretty close to the green. All right, so you just saw me hit the ball way right. That's going to happen. Nothing to be too upset about. Again, might be leaving the ball a little further back in my sense than I should be. Or not getting turned aggressive enough. Just some things to think about. But I got to stay aggressive. So even if you miss, shake it off. Be aggressive. I mean, if there are notes that you needed to take away, then sure, take them away. But get on your next shot. Let's see. So I'm short of the water. I'm not OB over the fence. Where I could be if, let's say, maybe I took my driver out, right? So all this decision making, and it comes down to me taking a five hybrid off of the tee and having a look at the green. It's not a bad outcome. All right. I love this because. You can see I have two trees, well really one tree in front of me, but it's actually right in front of my look at the green. And I mean, there's a couple shots I could try here. I could try to fade it in with an iron and I'm about 180 yards out. So I would take my six iron and go out to in a swing and, and aim, let's say maybe at that tallest tree um, just left of the, uh, the tree right in front of me. Or what I could do is just punch it out, let's say over here, with a short iron and have a, a better look at the green. And so what most people are going to try to do is just try to blast it past the tree here. And for me, I'm just going to work on getting it out and having another look at the green and hopefully getting it close to the pin and saving par. So that for me is going to be my pitching wedge. And just get it out over there. I am still going to fade it a little bit. All right. Got a little left to right action there. So you'll see this, or maybe you already saw it after I put the shot tracer on, but the flight of that ball goes left to right and as you work on your ball striking you're going to be able to control what the shape of your shot looks like to a degree um, maybe not like a, the pros but you'll be able to make the ball move a little bit and a lot of that is stance a lot of that is your hand path uh, that creates that so in that case, uh, that last shot that I took, opportunity for me to practice that shot, where one, I feel pretty decent about getting it out, um, but two, also use that as an opportunity to learn something, which, or practice something, which is, can I fade the ball in? And another thing that I'm figuring out, look at this, I actually don't have as clean of a look at the green as I would hope. I have a bunker I need to fly, I have some trees I need to fly, which shouldn't be that much of a problem, but something that maybe uh, I could have taken into account on where I wanted to land this ball. Uh, maybe I wanted to land it more over here in the middle of the fairway so I can avoid uh, trying to fly over those hazards and maybe miss hitting a ball and landing in it. All right, so this is about 74, 74 yards in, which is actually probably uh 80 percent gap wedge here it's 52 degrees i'm gonna choke down a little bit choking down is gonna make the short 
the shaft a little shorter and shaft a little shorter means the ball is going to uh, travel not as much distance. So this is typically going to go 90 yards but because I'm down hopefully I get it near within that, that 85 to 80 yard distance here. And I'm going to aim a little bit right of the flag because that bunker I, I don't want to aim at that bunker. I like that execution. All right, so I am maybe a 15 foot putt right of the flag, which is where I wanted to go. My pitch mark, fix that. And yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. If I try going right at the flag, you see there's less space on the left half of the green. Which means more of a chance that I'm gonna have to chip it, which I'm gonna have less control of over a putt. And so really happy with this result. So this one looks pretty straight to me. I'm just gonna go at it. Hopefully save par. Whew! Now obviously I missed something. But a bogey is not a bad result, especially after that two shots. This is hole number six. Uh, 150 to the middle of the green here. And, well, 149 to be, to be exact. And normally that's my eight iron, but I kind of want to work on, on choking down on a, on a stronger lofted club and taking an easier swing because by choking down, I make the shaft shorter. And shorter shaft means better contact usually. You're just gonna be closer to the ball. Uh, so it's just nice to have this shot in your arsenal. Uh, instead of having to go full swing, you can just go maybe an 80% swing with the, with the club a little stronger. All right, here we go. So a lot of folks when they I think pick up golf they take a club whale away and when they make good clean contact they'll measure that yardage and that yardage is gonna be what they feel like hey that club is my 160 yard distance or whatever but especially when you're you're kind of starting out um, or even if you've been playing for a number of years you're not gonna hit <laughs> perfectly clean, clean contact. Uh, the ground's not gonna be exactly like the range. There's gonna be undulations, and the ball's a little bit below your feet, above your feet. And so the more controlled of a swing you can take, uh, the more room for forgiveness there's gonna be. And the less club head speed you're trying to impart upon the ball, again, just more control and you can hit better shots. So. It's good to know what your regular swing distances are, but I've been playing uh, golf that I'm really happy with just by choking down on clubs and uh, and working with the distances that I think I'm gonna hit from there. Cut it onto the green. That was about a 140 yard shot there. According to my watch anyway. Like I said, fix my pitch mark. I think I'm stepping on my own line right now, but whatever. So I'm going to walk this one because it's a little bit longer. And so I'm going to be putting uphill. And I see a little bit right to left. And so I'm going to be aiming a little bit to the right of the, right of the cup. And yeah, I do see that. From here too. All right. So don't think about it too much. Just focus on the speed. Get it close to the hole.
This is 125 yards to the middle. And the flag looks a little close and um, I could shoot the pin if I wanted, but I feel like my watch is pretty good. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that it's maybe 120 to the pin. Um, I feel pretty confident with my pitching wedge, getting it decently close. And so in this case, there's, I mean, there's a bunker on the right and a bunker back left. I don't think I'm going to hit it hard enough to get a bunker in the left. And I feel pretty confident that hopefully I don't miss hit it where it goes short and goes bunker short right. All right, so here we go. Get my feet aligned. So it rained this morning and I think last night. And when it rains, you get some pretty soft greens. This is where my shot landed. And that's where my shot rolled back to. And so when the greens are more soft, your shots are gonna spin. And this means that the green is really, really soft. Uh, because it spun back maybe about 25 feet, which is pretty unreal. So this one I see a little bit of right to left. I have some time, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna look it from the back too. Yep, I see that still. bit of an uphill but not not much so I'm gonna aim maybe two cups two cups to the right So I'm almost out of battery here, so I'm going to make this the last hole that I record. So a couple things I mentioned earlier is that it seems like the ball has been a little too far back in my stance, so I'm going to try to put all that information that I've gained throughout this round to you. So I'm going to put it a little bit forward. I'm going to aim at the left bunker because I, I have a left to right shot shape. And is about 200 yards away, so I'm actually taking my 200 yard club. So, all right. Fluid. So, this is gonna be a tough putt. There's a ridge right here that I have to get over that then releases downhill. Um, so, I'm gonna be going probably along a line that's something like this. And then get the ball to curve, curve back. And over here, I'm just thinking about getting it close. Give myself a decent opportunity of parring this. 200 yard par three, so walking away with a par is a pretty good result. So leaving it low. So that was actually a par four. So it ended up being par, but you know, most of the par threes that I play now are 
like 180 to 200 yard par three. So, you know, it feels like a bogey, uh, even though it is a par, but I guess I'll take it. And that concludes, uh, still one hole to go, but like I said, almost out of batteries here. So hopefully this was enjoyable to follow along. Um, and thanks for joining me.